Now we're ready to begin Table 6423, the first document that you're going to complete in this course. And it serves as a test of whether GDP is communicating with Word and whether you can upload your documents successfully. But you also may need some help in creating this document, especially if you've not had a course like keyboarding previously. So we're going to open GDP from the very beginning by clicking the icon on the desktop. The software opens usually to the last place where you were working. And we need to find Lesson 64. We want to create Table 6423. You double click that. You read the instruction screen that appears. Click Next once probably will be the only option open to you with the other buttons grayed out, but you want to create Table 6423. This is where you have to be patient while GDP opens your word processor. I am resizing my screen so that I can see the instructions that I've posted over on the right. If you would like to use the instructions that I've prepared for these documents, I will post all that are available in Blackboard so that you can also have the instructions to the right as you're working on your document. And the main thing to check as the word processor opens is if you have the GDP tab at the top of your screen. Notice that GDP opened this document already named for you, Table 6423, at the top of the page. Always be sure that you are working on the correct document that you expected to open also. All right, our first step is going to be to insert a table with three columns in 10 rows. There are usually several ways of doing things in Word. I'm going to show you one. Use the Insert tab, Table. And you could draw the table here or use this command, Insert Table, where you can specify the number of columns, three columns and 10 rows, and click OK. Because Word has defaults inside the table that are different than we want to use, my first step is to select the whole table and change the font size to 12. We want our general body font size to be size 12 and Word defaults at 11. So I ask you to change that first. Then we're going to select the first row. Notice you can do that by letting your cursor change to this white pointer pointing back toward the table, you can move it up and down in the margin and select rows by that method by just clicking once. So we select the first row, then I'm going to right click and say Merge Cells. Now I use the right click menu whenever possible, but you can also find all of these commands on the table tools. Two tabs that are part of the table tools are Design and Layout you will find Merge Cells on the Layout tab of Table Tools. Okay, the first step in this then is to center a title in all caps bold and 14 point font. This is going to be on two lines as is indicated in your book. I'm going to turn on bold by on the keyboard using Control B. I'm going to turn on my caps lock key and I am going to center this line horizontally in the table by clicking Control E. Press Enter at this point to have our two line title. And then we will press Enter one time to insert a blank line in the row. You always do this either after the title or the subtitle when there is one. Now before moving on, so that the blank line will not be at 14 point, I'm going to right click to show my quick access menu here and then change the selected font size to 14. At this point I can click tab to move to the next row and I'm going to type the column headings. In row 2, in upper and lower case and bold, 12 point. So I take caps lock off I need to turn on bold again, so control B. And our column headings are going to be 
beginning of year, tab to the next cell, tab again, and type value. Tab one more time to the next row. Now Word is automatically turning off bold, and we can continue typing the information in the body of the table, tabbing cell to cell. Notice that I do not want you to insert spaces when typing cur currency amounts or insert spaces or any other kind of command after you finish typing the word or the amount in the cell. Under interest, we're simply going to type the dollar sign, then two zeros, a period, and two zeros. Type tab for the next cell. In this one, the first amount in the value column, it's going to need three spaces between the dollar sign and the seven to account for the larger amounts that are going to come below. We allow two spaces for each digit and one for each comma. So we're going to space one, two, three, then type 700.00 and then tab to the next cell. We only use the dollar sign in the first cell, but we're going to type the amounts just as they are. Tab. When you have finished typing all of the amounts in as indicated so that your table looks like this one, I'm going to turn on Show Hide so that we can see the formatting marks. Notice how the three spaces between the dollar sign and the 700 are indicated with dots. You'll get very used to these formatting marks as you try to find errors in your documents. But at this time, your table should look just like this, and our next step is going to be to use AutoFit to adjust the column width. Now, remember your commands are up here on the table tools or in the right-click menu. So just to be sure that you can locate both places, I'm going to use the table tools command to AutoFit this table. AutoFit contents, the first choice, and notice the difference in our table already with that one command. And you can also do that by right-clicking and choosing Auto Fit from the menu here. The next step is going to be to center the table horizontally and vertically. So we're going to use this table move handle in the upper left corner of the table to select the whole table. Then the procedure is different for horizontal and vertical centering. Horizontally, we go to Properties table properties on the layout tab of the table tools menu. Then we choose under alignment, center, and OK. Now this is different from your paragraph centering. If you have not selected your whole table, using paragraph centering command can get you in a lot of trouble changing the alignment in your table. Now our next step is going to be to center it vertically, so we can leave it selected, but now we're going to the Page Layout tab. We're going to click the Page Setup dialog box launcher, this little square in the corner. And once this box shows up, we're going to the Layout tab on the box, then under Page, Vertical Alignment, we're going to select Center and OK. Now there's one more thing I didn't do, and that is to align the columns and the amounts within them. So we're going to select interest and value and the amounts all the way down to the bottom. We're going to go to the Home tab and select Right Alignment. You could also use Control-R. Now the table will look more like the sample in the book and the sample document that I have placed on our sample documents page. At this point, you can double check all of your work and then test whether or not you can return to GDP.